House lawmakers have approved $40 billion in new aid for Ukraine. That's $7 billion more than President Biden requested. Now, this comes after the U.S. intelligence chief warned members of Congress that Vladimir Putin is preparing for a prolonged war and could resort to, quote, more drastic means. ABC News foreign correspondent Tom Sufi Burridge joins me live now from Kyiv, Ukraine, with more on this. Tom, Ukrainian forces are regaining control in areas Russian troops once occupied. Now the head of the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency is also saying Ukraine killed up to 10 Russian generals, and he's warning Putin may turn to a nuclear threat. That's a lot to unpack there. What's the response in Ukraine? Well, Diane, a really senior Russian politician, the Speaker of the Russian Parliament, has said today in a pro-Kremlin newspaper that the nuclear option shouldn't be taken off the table. But significantly, he was pressed on whether... Russia would move first. And he said, no, actually, Russia should only take that option if, in his words, the United States launched a nuclear attack first. So I don't think politicians here in Kiev are actually focused on that, to be honest. They're focused on the fighting in the Donbass in the east of Ukraine, which is raging right now. Russia claiming it's made significant gains there. The Pentagon saying they're incremental gains. And the Ukrainian president this morning really celebrating uh, the capture by Ukrainian soldiers in the northeast of the country near the second main city, Kharkiv, a significant number of villages. And President Zelensky posted a tweet overnight thanking House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and other House lawmakers for approving a new $40 billion package for Ukraine. If this passes, what would it do for Ukraine right now? Well, it's a potential game changer, Diane. Uh, think about it. The U.S. has supplied around $13 billion of aid to Ukraine so far. Another 40 on top of that would really have the potential to change the situation on the battlefield. We know from Ukrainian and U.S. officials that the artillery systems supplied by the United States are already being used on the battlefield. All of those types of Western-made uh, Western uh, weapon systems like the javelins against tanks, like the Stinger surface to air missiles to ensure that Russia doesn't have the control of the skies here. That's crucial. It's all making a massive difference. That huge amount of military aid coming in beyond now really could make a vital difference in this next phase of the war. And some key decision makers in Finland and Sweden are expected to announce their positions on potentially joining NATO. How could that impact the Western pressure on Russia? Well, look, Vladimir Putin has always uh, tried to avoid this happening, new member states of the NATO alliance. But his invasion of this country, Ukraine, has made it happen effectively or, or, or makes it very likely at this point in time. You know, public opinion in both Sweden and Finland has massively swung since Russia invaded Ukraine in favour of NATO membership. The political dynamic in those two countries in the last 24 hours, we've seen a sh even more rhetoric suggesting the leaders of those two countries are going to apply for NATO membership. And Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, has also said that in the meantime, while they apply for membership, normally that can take a significant amount of time. It might be speeded up. But the UK is saying that it would protect Sweden, making an agreement that if Russia tries to destabilise the country in that interim, the UK would act and you'd assume other partners like the United States would too. All right, Tom, in Kiev, Ukraine, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.